So if you walk around campus, middle school, high or high school, or college, you see a bunch of vending machines, soda vending machines in particular. My proposition is that soda vending machines in schools are harmful to students for two main reasons. One, because it's unhealthy for students, and two, because it drains their money out of their pockets. So my first claim, having soda, having soda machines unhealthy for students. So in a 12 ounce can of soda, there's about 10 packets of sugar, just that one 12 ounce can. And these sugar sweetened beverages are one of the main reasons that, wait, these sugar sweetened beverages are one of the main sources of added sugars in the American diet. And these intake of these beverages, including soda, leads to weight gain, which also makes a pathway to type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. Now, in the high school level, in a report released by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, it is said that one-fourth of high school students drink soda on a daily basis. And about one-third of these students drink a sugar sweet beverage at least twice a day. So this includes soda and Gatorade and flavored water as well. In a 2006 study from the Journal of the American Dietetic Association, it shows that nearly 71% of these children or high school students or college students purchase these sodas and other sweet drinks from the school vending machine itself. So it's not like they're bringing their own soda from home, which is also true, but 71% 71, 71 of them are actually buying it from school. These same students are also more likely to buy other sugar sweetened drinks than the other students who didn't buy the sodas from the vending machines. Also, the Philadelphia Coalition for Healthy Children points to an increase in sugar consumption in teenagers who have access to soda in these schools. So what they're trying to say is that when there is a vending machine on campus, they will be more likely to go there and buy a soda when compared to not having a vending machine there. Another study con conducted by the American Alliance for Health, Physical Education, Recreation, and Dance shows that there's a direct correlation between the childhood obesity level and the increased intake of soda that has been here, that, that has been around in the past few years. Now my second point is that drink spot at the vending machine for money out of your pocket. So each soda is saying about $1.25 or $2, and that's the, that doesn't seem as much. But when the student buys this every single day or more than once a day, it adds up. Soda actually does not quench your thirst, and it makes your body more dehydrated than before. It actually decreases the saliva amount, which causes more thirst, and soda also contains sodium, which makes you thirstier. An average person will reach for a second glass of soda instead of a glass of water. So, well, actually, when a student is thirsty and they go to a soda vending machine to get something to drink, they will probably go back there to get another one because they're still thirsty. Soda and other sugar beverages also are very addictive. I had a teacher in high school, or two teachers, and every morning they started off their day with a soda. And the days they didn't have it, they were cranky and they are crabby, and they actually made one of their students go to the vending machine and buy them a soda so they can feel right and calm, and their day was back to normal. This is because soda has caffeine, and since they didn't have their caffeine in the morning, the teachers felt out of place, and they needed their caffeine juice in the morning, which they got from soda. The soda was from the vending machine. And this also happens for students who have a lot of work to do, and they don't sleep, so they go to the vending machines to get their caffeine intake. Since soda is addictive, and it doesn't quench their thirst, students will keep going back to buy these sodas from the vending machine daily, maybe once or even twice a day. So because of soda being addictive and it doesn't quench your thirst, and because it's unhealthy for the body, having soda machines in schools is very unhealthy for students.
All right, structurally everything is pretty sound. Uh, it did seem like you dive into the two supporting points right after the proposition. It's, it's, in fact, they almost sound like part of the proposition, uh, but your division of those points is clear and you cite them uh, clearly when you're developing your argument. Uh, there's some good statistical information on the first point about the consumption of sodas and about uh, the frequency with which they are obtained at the schools out of the vending machines. I think that that was pretty good. The amount of contribution of sodas to obesity, I think, is a little bit um, presupposed. I think you need to follow up on that more. You, ha you had a quote that addressed that particular issue, but it seems like that would be something that, since it's a health issue and that's the main health issue that you're talking about, in fact, it's really the only health issue that ultimately uh, becomes substantial, uh, then you need to develop that point a little bit more. All the other issues are really less health issues than they are convenience things that people maybe get addicted to it or, you know, they, they have to have the caffeine or uh, they're not satisfying their thirst. Those aren't really health issues per se as much as they are other social issues that might be important. Uh, you cited one group that was providing some opinion evidence on this point and, uh, you know, like the Philadelphia good government group, or I don't remember what their exact name was, and I was trying to figure out how they obtained their information about the uh, subject that's being discussed. That seemed a little bit conclusionary. I didn't hear any proof on a whole bunch of the claims that you made about uh, soda not providing uh, satisfaction of thirst. Uh, that uh, sodas, you know, the issue of the caffeine, I think, is probably uh, relevant and true, but you've got two examples from your high school experience there, and the same thing could be said if they didn't get their coffee or didn't have enough apples or whatever it is that they get their caffeine from each day. Why is it soda that is responsible for that? If that was their daily consumption, they, they usually had the soda, then that's, you know, uh, something that illustrates your point pretty well, but Again, I think the issue here is caffeine as opposed to the sodas themselves. That's just the delivery system, just like the vending machines of the delivery system. I thought that you did a nice job delivering the speech, maybe a little bit rushed, but you had some good audience contact while you were speaking too.